So the topic we're looking at today is demography and migration. And the question we're going to be asking is, what are the factors that influence where people settle? So what is demographics? What is demography? Uh, basically, it is just the study of populations. And if you look at this graphic here in front of you, you can see that all we're doing, uh, all demographers do, is break down population into different categories whether it's ethnicity, education, age, income. What are the different ways that we can divide the population up to better understand it? One of the tools we can use to determine um, settlement, population settlement, is using a population density map. Basically that's going to tell us the number of people that live per square mile in an area. So here is a map of US population density and you can see it's color-coded, red being the most densely populated areas, 250 people or more, and the light color, the less densely populated area, less than 10 people per square mile. So take a look and make a note of what are the most highly um, populated areas? What are the least densely populated areas? And think about why it's like that. Here is another example of a population density map. This is for the continent of Africa. And you see that this area up at the top has the lowest population density. Why is that? That's the Sahara Desert. Obviously a lot of people don't want to live in the Sahara Desert. But directly above it, North Africa, much more highly populated. The west coast of Africa highly populated. And up here, Egypt. And this little squiggly line, which is the Nile River. Population there. It's desert all around, so people tend to concentrate near the water. Another way of breaking down population is through a population pyramid. This shows us breakdown by gender, male on the left, female on the right, and in the center column, age groups. So we can see what does the male population in a region look like? What does the female population look like? And we can compare them in terms of numbers and age groups. Here's a population pyramid for Cuba in 2010. And if we look at this, what can we tell about the Cuban population? We can see where are the largest number of people I mean, in terms of age group. We see right here in the middle, in the 30s and the 40s, that's the age that most people are. What could we figure out from that? That as we move up the population pyramid, there are fewer and fewer people. People don't live that long, maybe, in Cuba. Why is that? Is it because of nutrition? Is it because of health care? Are there other factors that affect how long a person lives if they live in Cuba? These are some of the questions that are posed when we look at population broken down in this way. So once we start breaking down the population into different groups and subgroups, then we can start looking at migration. Why are people moving? Why are people settling in the places that they're settling? The factors that affect this, we call them push-pull factors. So what does that mean, push and pull? Basically, push factors are the things that make you want to leave a place. And pull factors are the opposite. They're the things that draw you to a place. So let's take a look at the chart. Things that would push a person out of a place. Um, tyrannical leadership. It's boring. Uh, economically, it's unstable. It's a poor country. There's discrimination. Um, politically, it's repressive or corrupt. Who would want to live in a place like that? Well, where do you go? You go to a place that is the opposite. You're pulled to a place that has jobs, money. You might have family there. 
uh, the economy. The economy is more stable. You have better opportunities, and you have a government that is more accepting and tolerant. We leave the places that have little to offer us, we leave the places that we don't like, and we are drawn to the places that have opportunity, places that promise us the chance at more money, at better jobs, better education, modern conveniences. That's what everyone is looking for. So let's look at some specific examples of push and pull factors, push factors primarily. Um, religious persecution, and here's a perfect example, the Jewish diaspora. The Jewish people have been forced out of many places at many times. The earliest example would probably be by the Romans in the year 71, 72. Um, and they were forced to go to many different places. At various times in history, they are expelled from different countries. Forced migration. Political factors can often influence where people go. Here's an example of Cuban refugees, people who have left uh, communist Cuba because of the tyrannical oppressive government. And so where do they go? They go to the closest place, the place that offers them the most opportunity. They come to the United States, to Florida. People who are leaving and coming to a place where they have family, where they have economic opportunity, and where they have the freedom that their homeland denied them. We have two presidential candidates who come from this type of background. Both Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio are the children of Cuban refugees. And now they're running for president of the United States. Ethnic persecution can cause people to leave a place. In the 1990s, there was a conflict between two tribes in Central Africa, in Burundi, the countries of Burundi and Rwanda, the Hutus and the Tutsis. The conflict between these two and the sort of civil war that came out of it caused a number of people to leave the country. Why? Because of ethnic conflicts. Environmental factors can influence where people go. In the Sahel, an area, a region of Africa, just south of the Sahara Desert, uh, many people had to leave because of a series of droughts that made it unable for them to farm or raise cattle. Their only option was to migrate to other parts of Africa. A classic example of environmental factors affecting migration is the Irish potato famine of the 19th century. In the 1800s, uh, most Irish people relied primarily on the potato as a source of nutrition, and when the potato crops failed, uh, people had nothing to eat, the economy collapsed, people were evicted from their homes, as this uh, photo shows, and they had no choice but to leave. And where did they go? Many of them came to the United States. So some migrations are not by choice, they are forced. An example of forced migration would be the slave trade that lasted from the 17th century up through the 19th century. People forced, uh, taken by force from their homeland and brought to various parts of the world, uh, to Europe, to the United States, North America, Central America, and quite a few to the West Indies and South America. Migration is often influenced by physical geography. Um, the bulk of the human population was originally in Africa, then it spread into Europe and Asia. This is a map and a chart of human migration based on mitochondrial DNA. Everyone has this 
DNA in their mitochondria that allows uh, scientists to trace people back to their origins. So at one point you see that there's this huge migration through Asia, across the Bering Strait, and then south through North America, Central America, South America. For a long time, the Atlantic Ocean was a barrier that prevented further migration from Europe to um, what people called at one time the New World, North America and South America. By the 16th, 17th centuries, that had been overcome. And so here we see a map that shows the movement of the Dutch, the English, the French, and the Spanish across the Atlantic Ocean and settlements, colonization of North and South America, people migrating, overcoming a physical barrier to seek new opportunities. So what should you know by the end of this presentation about demography and migration? Well, you should know what demography is, that it is the study of population. You should know what a population density map is. Know that it is a map that shows the number of people who live per square mile in a given area. You should know what a population pyramid is, that it is a chart that breaks down population by gender and by age group. You should know what are the factors that affect settlement. What are the push-pull factors? What do each of those things mean and give examples of each one. And also know how physical geography in the past has affected routes of human migration. These are all things that you need to make sure that you note in your interactive notebook. If you want to go back and review, you can go back and replay any of the slides to catch up or pick up on anything that you missed. Remember that your lecture notes go on the right side of your interactive notebook.